What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sports Medicine Broadcast. Arm care routines to prevent injuries or uh, arm care <laughs> programs that will help keep your throwers, baseball, softball, football, the, the arms healthy because you always get those guys, especially right now as they're kind of starting up, uh, at least here in Texas, and they're always, oh, my arm's sore, my arm's hurting, I'm hurting right here, my elbow's hurting. And so I'm not very good at this. So I've got Carrie Beth Williams. She is actually a pitching coach. She's worked with some minor league baseball, and she does still does pitching coach stuff as well as athletic training. I've got Josh Ogden working with Baylor. Lots of, I think he said, 11 years there working with Baylor. Um, and or seven, I'm sorry, seventh season with Baylor Baseball. Um, and then we got Chris Butler, who just published an ebook to help with arm care programs. And so you can go to sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash Chris Butler ebook, and that'll take you to the link on his site. So again, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash Chris Butler ebook will take you to that uh, there that Chris has made up. So hopefully you'll have plenty of handouts, plenty of ways to help prevent injuries from your baseball players or your throwers. And then if need be, we can take care of it later. So <laughs> I am your host, Jeremy Jackson, and this is sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash arm care. So if you can't remember the link I said earlier, go to sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash arm care. All right. So Carrie, you got kind of an interesting story. So I want to kind of find out how you got to where you are right now. You're a teacher athletic trainer in West Virginia, but you, like I said, you said you worked as in the minor leagues or an independent league. And then also as a, as a pitching coach. So tell me a little bit of your story. Um, well, I grew up around sports. Um, my dad coached and was an athletic direct director, athletic trainer. Um, and you know, just kind of was natural for me to continue into sports. Um, I spent the first four years of my career at the high school level. Um, I worked as a pitching coach for the high school teams that I was working with as their athletic trainer as well. Um, and then I got into some um, independent league professional baseball um, with the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs and Evansville Otters and um, worked a lot with their pitchers, learned a lot from the, the pitchers from there and also got to teach them a lot as well. Um, and then I came back to the high school setting um, after that. And I've been dealing with base, baseball is my passion. Baseball is my favorite. And um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows it, but. It is definitely my passion to work with the throwers. Very good. It is. I'm a big fan of the Houston Astros, but other than that, I'm not like a big fan of baseball. So, <laughs> and I would say I'm kind of a bandwagon fan, you know, because for a couple of years they weren't really worth, worth watching, but uh, we did anyway. So, <laughs> all right. So you have come up with a an arm care routine that you use for your guys. So tell us a little bit about that, Chris, Josh. I want you guys to kind of work in uh, anytime you have comments. Or, you know, this is how I do this kind of thing. So just work in the conversation there. All right, go ahead, Carrie. Tell us a little bit about how you work specifically with high school throwers to prevent injuries. Um, I kind of made a mixture of I took like the throwers 10 and some things that I learned from my college days and some things that I learned from my biomechanics teacher. And then just things I picked up along the way, working with the different baseball programs. And, and my dad and my brother are also baseball coaches and played and everything. Um, so I've kind of taken this compilation of all of these experiences and um, come up with this preventative routine, um, mostly because in high school athletics, or at least around here, um, my pitchers aren't just pitchers. You know, I pull them out of a or off the mound in the third inning and they're going to be expected to go play second base or, um, you know, go play in the outfield somewhere. So there's, there's never any rest for them necessarily. Um, so there definitely was a need to keep their arms healthy and keep them on the field. Cause not only if they're injured, not only am I missing a pitcher, but I'm missing a position player somewhere too. Um, so I kind of came up with this. I took the throwers 10 and I kind of modified it. Um, so that we could do it on a daily basis um, and not take away too much time from them learning about their positions as well. Um, but I have them at the start of every practice, they go through um, pretty much just five of the throwers, 10 exercises. And then we do the push-ups plus and the, um, the dips every day. And then if they're a pitcher um, on the day after they pitch, they have to go through my entire um, 11 step routine. Um, 
and of course like running and those things and usually on the day after they pitch they're not working on their positions either I don't we usually let them have that day to kind of rest and recuperate from pitching the day before all right Chris you've done some work with professional athletes what are your thoughts there on what Carrie's gone on so far I'm sorry, was that, were you, uh, were you, were you asking me? Yeah, as I think Chris, I know you've done some work with oh, some of the yeah. professional athletes. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, um, you know, uh, I, I'm really kind of interested to hear, Carrie, about um, your the recovery um, uh, process. You said you had like 11 uh, steps or something like that on the day after they pitch? Yeah, um, so we take them, I go through um, the 90-90 internal external rotation, then we do the side internal external rotation, um, push-ups plus the PNF D2, D1 patterns, um, shoulder abduction with the TheraBands, uh, TYIs with the TheraBands, um, and then we do some scaption and some wrist flexion, wrist extension, um, supination, pronation using their, their baseball bats, um, and then of course the tricep dips as well. So those are my 11 exercises. I like that. I, I think uh, uh, something that we all talk about is prevention and warming up. But I think in baseball specifically, uh, the, the day after they pitch is, is huge. Um, and one of the things that I've really been trying to work on, on here as well is, you know, baseball is kind of a slow progressing sport. We always want to do things that have always been done in the past. And, and I think that a lot of times pitchers finish – they do all their arm care, prehab stuff, and the day after they pitch, it's just run around. Just run. You're, you're just running today. Mm-hmm. Run, 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 which I think is interesting. Um, I, I'd love to kind of hear hear y'all's thoughts on this. Um, you know, pitching is, a, is an explosive sport. It's kind of like doing 65 lighter weight clean and jerks or snatches. It, it's a total just full effort movement that happens really quickly. And I, and I think it's it's kind of interesting that we train them like marathon runners. And it's really weird that most runners just – or most pitchers just run a ton, do long, slow stuff where, um, you know, they should be doing kind of more explosive things. And then and in the recovery, it's the same thing where it's just, hey, you're just running today. You're going to be a recovery day. Um, and that's something that I've kind of been trying to work on too. Um, I've been trying to use – uh, blood flow restriction uh, with some of my pitchers on their recovery days. I don't know how much you guys know about about BFR. Um, definitely, you know, being down in Texas, you might be familiar with Johnny Owens and the Owens Recovery Science. Um, but I've been trying to get some pitchers to come in here and do recovery days. So where they're, you know, I hook them up to the BFR and they're doing some sled work and just a ton of leg work. It's not going to cause them a ton of, uh, you know, uh, post uh, exercise soreness um, and then with the BFR we can get that that growth hormone release coming to their body to aid in that recovery so um, I think that's awesome that you have a, an actual regimented uh, day after where I think a lot of times I think it seems like pitchers kind of get forgotten on those days afterwards so uh, I think that's really sounds really cool yeah, yeah I really like that also yeah and I'm a big fan of the running too I think you know, I don't want to overrun them, but I do want them to run, you know, a little bit of like three or four poles um, yeah. and, and work those legs as well as working their arms on the day after they pitch. You know, yeah. it, we it, it's an explosive sport, but it's also an endurance sport because we're, you know, we're playing for nine innings. So they've got to have that endurance to make it into the ninth inning. Um, yeah. So I do I want them to have the endurance in their shoulder and in their legs in order to, you know, continue playing and. Um, using that lower half as much. I, I'm a, I'm a big person on the, you know, use your lower half when you're throwing. Um, I don't want you to be an all arm guy. You definitely need to use, you know, those glutes and the abs and the um, quads and hamstrings. Use those big muscle groups to get your power, and then your arm is just, just there to place the ball where it needs to go. Yeah. All right. So that's actually one thing that. I learned when we were kind of leading up to this conversation is believe it or not, I, I still thought that it was the lactic acid. I hadn't seen any of this stuff talking about that. It's hydrogen ion that creates the soreness and that, you know, you always had to work out the lactic acid. And so um, Josh, talk a little bit about that. And then some of the stuff that you do, cause you, you know, Chris mentioned blood flow and I know you said you have it, but don't really use it much there. So Josh, why don't you take it for a little bit? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's something we, our staff was trained on the, the BFR system back in August and we're slowly rolling out more and more units. Um, you know, but so far I don't really have access to one dedicated to the ballpark. So that's not something I've, uh, really played around with yet at this point, but something I'm definitely interested to do in the future. Um, our pitchers, the day after they throw, they're going to go, uh, this is program, uh, program driven. They're going to do 30 minutes of cardio, whether that's, uh, you know, stationary bike, elliptical, uh, go for a jog. And again, I, I don't want to overdo the long distance, uh, conditioning aspect, but I, I agree with Carrie that there's you know, definitely a conditioning aspect involved, especially for a starter that's going to go six, seven, eight innings potentially. Um, you know, like this past weekend, our Sunday starter went seven and two thirds and full eight, uh, just, you know, dealing. So he's got to be able to, you know, continue that. And the day after they throw, we actually structure our, our dedicated arm care program uh, is a two day a week program. And I'll kind of get into probably later, you know, why we only do two days a week of dedicated arm care, but they'll come in the day after their, their big day of throwing and, you know, start foam roll the lats back hamstrings all the way down the posterior chain. Um, do some mobility work, especially you know, working on the anterior shoulder with the pec, the pec minor, uh, you know, those kind of things. And you know, everything we do strength-wise, arm care-wise, is uh, dedicated to the posterior shoulder. Um, and it's driven both by myself and our athletic performance coach. Um, thing in baseball is you know, internal rotation driven, internal rotation driven. And I don't personally internal rotation strengthening work is part of the arm care program. Now, post-op specific cases, absolutely. You know, just dedicated arm care, it's going to be sideline diagonal raises, black burns, six count, what we call six count field goals, which are essentially modified black burn, more posterior, posterior shoulder stuff. And we kind of approach it uh, with the effect or with the attitude of if you're targeting the low trap, the rhomboids, you know, the, the scap stabilizers, the, the rotator cuff itself is going to come along for the ride. Okay, Kerry, you said that every day they do some of these exercises. So, again, you're working with high school athletes, and, again, a large part of the, the sports medicine broadcast audience is athletic trainers working with high school athletes. So talk a little bit about, about how you talk to the coach, how you work that in, how you get the athletes – um, doing the exercises correctly because it's it's for me if I'm not standing there watching them do the exercise right outside the athletic training room they're doing it whatever cheap way they can do it so they'll drop the elbow when they're trying to do external rotation or whatever it is so talk just a little bit about how you get the high school athletes to comply um well we start um the bands are supposed to be set up as soon as um, practice begins and as the kids are rolling onto the field they're starting their band program um, and on those days, we only do the, the five. We do the internal, external at 90, the internal, external at um, um, zero degrees of abduction. And then um, we do um, the push-ups plus. So on, on that aspect, um, I've already gone through and I've taught them all how to do it. We spend usually the first week of practice um, where I'm on the field and I'm working with them and teaching them exactly what they need to do. Um, and then I kind of try to teach them how to, um, you know, give each other the cues that they need. Um, and we'll do, you know, they'll be up at 90 doing their internal external rotation and I'll stop them after five and say, where do you think your arm is? Does it feel like it's in the right place? Now look at it. Is it really in the right place? And, and teach them how to give each other the cues as well. And they make fun of me because they, you know, they hear a lot, um, shoulders back, abs tight. I, I say that constantly to them, um, shoulders back, abs tight, stand up straight. Um, and so they, they, they've learned to say that to each other now um, and to really watch each other. But while I've got one group on bands, I've got the other group is doing their push-ups plus um, and doing their um, tricep dips. And um, they're they're shifting back and forth between doing their band work and doing those things on the ground. And then once the whole team has finished their band work, then we go into our um, like our stretching and our uh, warm up throwing and that those things. Um, but yeah, when they the bit the biggest thing that I think helps 
as far as them being able to cue themselves. Um, I'll have them put their hand on each other's back between the shoulder blades and see if they are pinching so they can, they can feel it that way. See if they're pinching their shoulders back. Um, and then, um, having, I use their glove. I make them hold their glove between their elbow and their side whenever they're doing that internal external rotation, um, on their side because nobody wants to drop their glove. So they're going to really be pinching that there. Um, because otherwise, you know, they get that, they start doing that winging and they, you know, they're doing this motion instead of holding and really doing that sh full shoulder rotation. Um, so I make them hold their glove there or, or a towel or something. Um, and then they like to walk up and down the line and smack each other in the stomach and see if their abs are tight. So, I mean, it, it's kind of fun, but they are getting the work done. And they know that if I walk down the field and I see them doing it wrong, you know, they're going to get reprimanded and, um, and they don't like that. I'm going to make them start from, from scratch. They're going to start all over again and they might miss part of whatever part of practice they want to do the most. You know, they're going to have to do bands instead. Josh, in your, in your notes here, you wrote that you ex try to explain to them, you know, look, I'd rather you guys come in here and work for 30, 40, 60 minutes on prevention than yep. us having to go have to do surgery and then you're out for weeks and then we're doing surgery for hours a day. I mean, uh, rehab for hours a day. So, and you also mentioned that one of the best things is when you have the, the upperclassmen keeping the younger guys accountable. So you, you kind of train them year after year after year. And like Carrie was saying, they, they're keeping each other accountable, but talk some about how you have that going on there. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it's a, uh, Culture building is a, a long-term process, but the beautiful thing, you know, in my setting is I've got a group of juniors and seniors that have done this program and I've worked with their entire career at this point. And they'll drag the freshmen in and coach them up. And, and just like Kerry said, it's abs tight, shoulders back and down. And we also focus on breathing while we're doing it. And typically I'll show the freshmen once. And then after that, it's, uh, you know, the seniors are, yo, dog, why, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you getting the arm period? Are you trying to be hurt? Um, and they'll drag the freshmen in and coach them up on the things that I've coached them on the past few years. Um, keeps the freshmen once, and then after that, you know, typically it's the seniors and returning guys that recognize the value in it. Um, and they're going to continue to bring those guys in. In fact, uh, I guess about six months ago, we opened a pitching lab uh, a facility on our first base side with high speed video and rap soto and that kind of thing. All right, Josh, you're, you're breaking up a good bit. Um, I don't know if you can try unplugging or plugging the mic back in, Josh, but it's pretty difficult to understand here. So, all right. All right. Is that better? So, as Josh is kind of working on, on his audio there, he's had some technical difficulties. We're going to continue. Chris, tell me a little bit more about the ebook and why you chose those exercises to, to put into your first ebook as part of your arm care program. All right. So that ebook is kind of, um, it, it was, it was, it was a little bit of an experiment, um, just to kind of see, you know, can I even do it, you know, write an ebook? Um, but those, those exercises are, it's not a comprehensive, um, you know, uh, compilation, uh, of exercises. It, it's, it was, um, it's exercises that I use a lot. Um, and the ebook, I wanted to put that out there to kind of draw people into the program that, that I've got going here in the clinic. So, um, just for a, a little, a background on myself, I'm a, I'm a physical therapist. So I, I'm dealing more with with uh, kids that are, that are doing rehab. And a few years ago, um, I was seeing enough pitchers coming in here and talking to them enough and talking to their parents enough um, and seeing kind of all of the, the stuff that was going on in, in the higher level baseball, you know, people getting injured and having a lot more Tommy John surgeries. Um, and, and what I think is going on and what it seems like, you know, from the research is going on is that it's not a problem at the collegiate level. It's not a problem at the minor league level or the, or the professional level. 
problem is happening in their, their adolescent age and, and high school years to where these kids are playing on multiple teams, uh, pitching on multiple teams, or they're playing pitcher and catcher, um, and there's not enough um, kind of uh, uh, care. A lot of high schools aren't, aren't lucky enough to have a, a really skilled athletic trainer uh, to kind of put together arm care programs. And these kids are pitching in showcases and playing summer ball, and there's not really enough rest or, or even other sports um, that they're playing. And um, when they're getting into the minor league level, their arms are maybe a little bit more worn down than, than players were back in maybe in the 80s and the 70s. Um, and so what I wanted to try and do is put together a program that um, I could have healthy kids come in and see me. Um, and what I, what I set up is I, I like to have them come and see me four times a year. So I get a preseason, an in-season, a postseason, and an off-season checkup with them. And I ask them questions uh, specific about their participation level. Um, you know, how much are they pitching? Are they pitching with pain? Are they, are they fatigued when they're pitching? You know, how many innings are they pitching? Are they pitching on multiple teams? All those kinds of questions. Pretty, pretty, you know, I, I took a lot of the questions from the, from the pitch smart, uh, campaign. Um, and I, and I talked to them about the dangers of pitching too much and pitching while you're fatigued and not taking care of their arm. And so what I do is I, you know, I run through a basically a physical therapy evaluation to where I'm going to measure all of their, you know, arm, passive and active range of motion, joint mobility, stability, what do they look like on their hands, and then a general overall flexibility kind of assessment. And then what do they look like in just like a, a general movement screen? How do they move? And what I build for them is like a comprehensive arm care and um, athletic building routine. So, you know, there's, has all the arm care exercises, all of the ones that, that, I mean, I don't really have anything super fancy that I've made up, um, but you know, all the basics. And then what I try to do is integrate, um, the rest of the body into the scapula and the rotator cuff and that kind of thing. Um, because I think something that, that I'm noticing with the kids that I see that get injured, they're really good. Um, uh, I don't, I don't want to quite say athletes, but they're really good baseball players or really good soccer players. And I think what we're losing now is that athleticism. Um, some of these kids now, they just play soccer or they just play baseball and they can do all of the really high level skill work. But when you break it down, their squats and their lunges and their, their typical things that they should be able to do, they're not doing as well because they're spending so much time on sports specific stuff. And then, um, you know, the general building blocks of movement had been lost because PE is there's much less PE nowadays. Um, and there's much more emphasis on be a really good pitcher or be really good at soccer or, or whatever the sport it is. Um, so I try to develop um, overall athleticism so that they can get a break from just the constant re repetition of if you're, if you're a right-handed thrower and right-handed swinger, you're always going to your left. Um, so, try to get more overall well-rounded stuff. Um, and then, you know, the ebook, like I said, is, is a, I'm planning on writing a, a much bigger ebook. This was an ebook that had six exercises that I like to use uh, to help kids uh, tolerate the, the, the slowing down or the deceleration of the, of the pitching motion. And so I like these ones because, you know, they, it gets the whole body involved and you're getting the glutes and the hamstrings and the foot and the hip core and the shoulder and scapula all kind of moving together and controlling that uh, through three planes of motion uh, up against gravity. So that, that's a big thing that I really try to focus is get them on their feet, get them moving in three planes and um, you know, get the whole body uh, working together. That's actually one of the things that I've most incorporated from some of our conversations with, with Josh and Mike. And they were talking about, you know, if it's a knee problem, then you need to work the whole, the ankle, the calf, the quad, the hip, everything. You need to, you need to work all of that. And so I was just teaching my sports medicine kids our ankle rehab, and that incorporates, you know, squats and lunges and push-ups and uh, dead bugs and rows and in everything because we're working the whole entire body and not just moving the ankle in four directions and then doing calf raises and sending them on their way. So Josh, are you back with me? Um, I think so. Can you hear me a little better? Um, yeah, uh, I think it sounds better. So we were, Chris was talking about, he does the full PT evaluation. That's one of the things that you said that 
you like to do as well is making sure you're doing the evaluation beforehand and, and identify those things that, that most likely to need work. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, again, what you do to prevent injury. And uh, Chris, I love what you said about moving in three dimensions and against the effects of gravity. I think you know, that's what we absolutely have to consider. Um, of my athletes, when they arrive to campus or when they arrive back from summer ball, and also uh, fitness and catchers at least two more times during the year. Almost finding that that's where I go into the rehab programs that you know, incorporate. I said, if I'm working a shoulder, it's a it's a little bit with rehab. Ankle and Jeremy, I love what you're doing with the, with the bugs in the core. Um, yeah, we screen everything from cervical motion all the way to ankle mobility and any kind of deficiency. Uh, historically, I've only screened passive range of motion, but I'm actually I'm going to be adding active uh, starting with the next school. That's it. All right, Josh, you're action. you're cutting in and out again. Uh, it may be that you're on the the Wi-Fi now. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. So what you can try doing, Josh, is uh, turning off the camera and see if that, if that makes it stream the audio only a little bit better. So if you can just mute your camera or turn your camera off and then we'll try it again. All right, Josh. Okay. Hello. Um, camera's off. Is that a little bit better. Uh, yeah, it's not lagging as much, at least right now. So. All right, so you said you okay. you do the same something about four times a year. You'll see the guys do the assessment and then you know do rehab according to to the assessment findings. According to the assessment findings, right? Um, and it's a, a thing where obviously I have the luxury of working with one team in thirty five to forty guys. Um, in some other settings, may not have that. But. Uh, yeah, we, we screen everything from cervical rotation to all the way down to the ankle mobility. And then each guy's from a specific prevention program based on whatever limitations that we uh, seem to find in that. All right, Josh, I think we're, we're losing you again there. So, all right, Kerry, let's go back to a little bit more. Um, we mentioned running after. Uh, after the, the pitcher's running, uh, after they pitch, and you said you they have to do the whole 11 exercises as well as run just a little bit. So talk to me a little bit about uh, that process. And then also I want to do uh, see what you do if somebody says comes in saying, hey, my arm is sore. Okay. So talk to about what do they do afterwards, and then what do you do when they do come in? So after um, a kid comes off the mound – and has finished the game because like I said when my kids come off the mound most of the time they're you know going to second base or they're going to outfield or somewhere else um, but once they are finished for the day um, they're expected to run um, you know three four poles maybe um, not not an excessive amount or anything and then go through the um, one set of all 11 exercises of um, that modified throwers 10 that I've put together um, and they, I expect them to do that before they go home at night. Um, then, you know, if they come in the next day, they say their arm's sore. We look at um, where where is your arm sore? Um, you know, I'm, I'm always very cautious about that UCL issue. Um, if we've got that pain in the um, flexor pronator group, if we got that uh, medial pain. You know, th those are red flags for me. And I really pay um, very close attention to those things. Um, but if we've got the, you know, the soreness up in the shoulder or in the back, um, a lot of times I, I personally really like to do um, massage. Um, I feel like I can really feel where the tensions are and uh, work them out, you know, myself. Um, but, it, you know, if I don't have time to spend doing that massage, uh, working out those really tense spots, then I'll put them on a stem. But honestly, with my with my pro guys, um, the day after they pitched, they always came in and we did a massage the day after they pitched. We did a deep tissue massage. Um, and I'd like to be able to do that with my high school kids. It's just a matter of, you know, between baseball and softball and track and tennis, do I have enough time to get those kids in and, and really work on them? Or do I need to just 
hook them up to the stem, let the stem do some of the work and then give them a good stretch at the end. Um, but you know, if I have that pain in that flexor, um, flexor pronator mass, I definitely am going to do some massage there. See if I can get rid of that, um, that tension, if it goes away or is it truly an injury, um, that we need to keep working on. I'm not sending them out to the field as long as they have any kind of pain in that medial portion or that flexor pronator mass. Um, I'm not letting them throw until I'm, you know, 100% sure that that's not going to be an issue. And um, so, yeah, I, we do, um, they do another set of the, the 11 exercises that I gave them that the day after they pitched, assuming that we're not playing another game that day. Um, and then they do some polls and things. Um, but most of it's going to be, we're going to be focusing on stretching. We're going to be focusing on doing the band work. Um, we may even go through, um, I may take them down and put them on the mound and have them go through their perfect pitches, um, making them, um, I don't put a ball in their hand, but making them go through the motion of a perfect pitch um, and fixing, you know, things that I might have seen while they were on the mound the night before. Um, you know, they weren't striding out enough. They weren't using, they weren't pushing off um they weren't pushing off of the rubber enough. They were, you know, all arm instead of using their legs. And we, we talk about those things, even when they come off the mound between innings, we'll talk about, you know, you weren't, you weren't really using your lower half. What's going on. Do you have some pain somewhere, you know, and, and we make adjustments between every inning if we can um, just to make sure that they're not um, losing their, their mechanics. Um, the first time that I see them start to use poor mechanics I, I start getting concerned and we start having to have those conversations of, is this something that we can fix before the next inning starts? Or is this something that you're, you're not going to finish this game and you need to come off the mound until we can fix it until we do have time to fix it. Um, but we, I, I do a lot with pitchers and, um, but with any of my kids, if they come in saying their arms sore, if it's a, if it's a bicep, if it's the back, you know, we're going to massage it out. We're going to stretch them. And we're going to send them back out to the field and let them let them work. Um, but it, again, if it's that medial pain, they're they're staying in my training room until I can figure out why they're having that pain and how we're going to fix it. All right, Chris, what are some of the things that you really cue your uh, younger athletes on as they're coming in and and seeing you? Um. Well. The main thing that, that I that I really try to work on, especially if it's someone who's coming in and they are healthy and, and we're doing kind of you know, more of a, a healthy arms uh, kind of prevention uh, program, I'm just trying to really check in with what are they feeling, uh, how, how does how do they warm up, do they have difficulty warming up, and, and um, you know how are they feeling the day afterwards. Um, but you know I think. You know the cues as far as the exercises go. You're you're always trying to get, especially young kids, in the best position possible, and make them kind of understand that. Because you know, working when you work with 13, 14, 15 year old kids, uh, especially boys, um, you know they kind of grow a little bit later than the girls. They have a hell of a time trying to hinge from the hip. Uh, you, they get this weird bend in their spine when they kind of go into a lunge and reach or a squat. Um, and so that, that's a major part, you know, uh, you know, that along with kind of what Carrie was talking about is just kind of pulling the shoulders back and keeping the core tight. You know, a lot of these 13, 14 year old kids, they have no clue of, about their core. You put them onto their hands and feet in a push up position, you can see all kinds of, of weird stuff to where they're avoiding, uh, using the, the core to hold them up. So, um, that's a huge part with, with the population that I see is is having them um, be able to flex from the hip and and get into uh, solid lunge positions to where they're not overly anteriorly tilting their their hips or when they're on their hands in a push up position um, can they even get up into that push up plus you know a lot of times you just see them hanging out to scaps back and and their hips are kind of sagging down and, and it's a miracle they're even holding themselves up. I don't know what's holding them up, but it's not the right muscles. That's for sure. Um, so that's kind of what I really try to focus on is, 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 is um, getting them activating those muscles around the hips and shoulders and all that, that, you know, diagonal patterns in between 
so that they can you know, move correctly in general, for sure. All right. So we have the links to Carrie's and Josh's, some of his exercises here. Again, it's sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash arm care. Right. So we've talked a lot about the things that Carrie does, some of the cues. Honestly, for me, I'd be intimidated going out there and watching and saying, do your perfect pitch. However, with time or even using, you know, like we've talked about before, the technology, the coach's eye app, or having the coach sit with you and say, hey, what do you see doing them doing wrong? Or having another player, maybe that one that's a little bit better, watch and say, hey, what do you see that he's doing wrong? There's there's another option there if that's an area that you're not very strong at, like I feel that I would not be very strong at. Um, one of the other things, though, is some of us will be listening to this show in you know august whenever it's not baseball season anymore and so josh are you still with me um i think so think so okay so one of the questions i wanted to ask you is what do you do during the off season to get those guys stronger i know you said you focus on the the back of the shoulder work uh but without them burning out without them just overdoing it the short answer is i, I work with our strength staff we, and the reason we only do a formal arm care program uh, twice a week during fall and during the season is we actually build that into their weight program. So we'll do, I guess part of the warm up, we do thoracic mobility, thoracic extension, uh, rotational pattern. And then supersetted with, say, a squat, we'll do a, a T spine or serratus roll on the wall. We'll do a external rotation with the band, um, partner pal off press, those kind of things. Kind of thing. So we, we left four days a week and actually built it into what they're doing in the weight room. All right, so our, uh, two of our baseball coaches are like kind of into CrossFit. And so I, I really like that because it changes things up. Uh, I don't know, obviously there's the potential for injury when you're kind of going all out without real concern about form and that kind of thing. Um, what are your thoughts there as far as using that CrossFit during the off season or those style workouts for baseball players? Uh, risk reward. Um, I think there are positive elements, but I don't think that most baseball players have the prerequisite of mobility to do a, a barbell snap or barbell thing. Um, I'm not a fan of like the two clubs. Um, the best thing about CrossFit is getting people to, to barbell. Um, and so there are positive aspects. To it, but I think you, know, you have to take the good and leave the bad in terms of you know, what's potentially risky. Um, if they're doing repetitive thousand meter throws and they're also a thrower, now we're talking two sports that are associated with first or stress reactions. Um, and now we combine those two. All right, I'm going to jump back to Chris one last time. Chris has got to go. He's out in uh, California at Cats PT. Chris, final parting thoughts about arm care programs for throwers before you got to go take care of these patients. Um, I mean, as long as you're doing something, as long as there's, there's something that you're doing, I mean – uh, even whether it's the, the thrower's 10 or something that, that, that I put up on, on any of my stuff or, or anything you've seen from uh, Ryan Old or, or Alan Jager or, you know, you know anything that whatever Joshua and, and Carrie have been talking about, all, all of this stuff sounds great. As long as, you're, uh, as, long as you are um, taking the appropriate um, time off per year uh, and actually not throwing a baseball for a few months, you can still be doing some workouts and some baseball stuff, but you know, as long as you're getting some recovery time, as long as you're working on the, you know, you know posterior cuff and the, and the overall um, kind of uh, thoracic mobility and core stability, as long as you have something going and it's not just constant throwing, 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 and you have, especially if you have somebody who's your advocate, uh, someone like an athletic trainer or a PT or a strength coach um, that can kind of be an advocate for you and be a, the kind of in between uh, between the, the player, the parent and the coaches. Um, I think that's what's key um, because sometimes kids just kids want to play. And if you say, Hey, I want you to pitch on this team and on another one. I remember when I was a kid, I, I just wanted to keep playing. So I think, think the stuff that you're doing, Carrie sounds awesome. 
the fact that you're involved with so many different age groups is incredible. And, and Josh, definitely, uh, you know, Baylor's an outstanding university and it sounds like you've got an awesome uh, situation going down there uh, with, with your guys. So, um, you know, any, as long as you're, if you're a ball player, seek out somebody in your area who can kind of guide you at least a little bit uh, as far as how to take care of your arm because that's our biggest problem now is we're, we're losing out on some really good and special arms because it's just, it's just too much and, and they're not getting taken care of. Um, you know, and so that, that's what I would recommend to any young player seek out an ATC or a PT or a strength coach or, or anyone who understands movement really well and, and can program something for you to, to kind of uh, keep your arm as healthy as possible all the way throughout the season. All right, well, Chris, I appreciate you jumping on here with us. If you want to get a hold of Chris, he's most likely to be on Instagram. So you can look at Chris Butler Sports PT. Uh, search him up there, and and you'll find him there. He does lots of good posts. Again, that's where you can download his his ebook about arm care. Again, I have a link to it in my show notes here. But Chris, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks a lot, Jeremy, Kerry, Joshua. Nice to be on on the show with you guys. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> All right, um, Josh. I know we we've, we've been struggling here. Uh, thank you. And and so, are you are you with me now? Yeah. 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 All right. Sounded sounded good right now. So, okay, Josh. Anything you feel that we haven't covered, or you haven't typed in the notes? Because one reason I love, not one of the reasons, but one of the things I love about having Josh on here is he likes to type in notes. And that makes it so much easier because I don't have to type in anything. So he's got lots of really good stuff in the notes in case, you know, the audio was bad or something like that. Then you can check out the show notes. Carrie's typed a lot in there. Josh typed a lot in there. They've both put uh, their pitching or their arm care programs in there. So you got a lot to take away from the show notes. So Josh, anything you feel like we need to go over again or hit differently? Remember the show notes, you know, I put that on day one and day two, but I didn't put the exercises. So I'll go back and do that uh, here shortly. Just kind of a, a list of the exercises that we actually do. Um, but I think, you know, all three of us have, have been on the same thing of core type, you know, gaps back and down. And, you know, as long as, you know, your principles are solid, I completely agree with what Chris said. The program is good there for itself. And if you just, it doesn't matter if it's storage 10, if it's, you know, Jaeger, PRI, you know, what, whatever methodology you want to do, if you're just going through the motions and, and playing around, um, external rotation is external rotation. You know, this is a waste of time. And I think as long as principles are solid and you're doing something, uh, it's going to be beneficial. All right. Make sure your principles are solid. You're doing something that's preventative. You're in control. All right. Carrie, anything else you feel like we need to uh, cover as we're talking about arm care programs? I mean, like Chris was saying, I, I really agree that, you know, you do need to have that off season. I'm a big proponent of, you know, the three sport athlete. I want my athletes to play different sports. Um, I don't think that you should be, you know, throwing a baseball 12 months a year. And even my professional guys, we would talk about, you know, when our season ended in September, they were taking October, November, December off and then coming back to the baseball in January. You know, they were going to they were going to either, you know, just focus on weight training for those three months or they were going to go, you know, play pickup basketball somewhere or do something else. But they were not going to throw for those three months until January and give their arms a rest and focus on some other aspects of their body. And I, I really think, especially in our, our youth athletes, um, even like down to little league, it, the younger they are, the more that I think that they need to be involved in something other than baseball um, and, and really get that well-rounded um, athleticism. You know, they, if you only focus on baseball, you're only focusing on those muscles and you're setting yourself up for injury and failure in the future. But if we can teach them other skills and, and give them other ways to stay in shape and stay healthy, um, that's not putting so much stress on their arms, especially when they're young. Um, I, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for playing multiple sports and, and learning different different ways to do things. 
All right, so John Harmon listening live, he he said that they just bought a bunch of like rice buckets and hammers. So I think that's where you put the hammer at the bottom and you got to reach down there and grab it out or something like that. I know I've heard of that before. So some of the grip, grip strength stuff, uh, I, I assume that's what he's talking about. But he said... Uh, uh, baseball in the rice bucket, and I like them grip the pitch and you know, do flexion extension, pronation, supination. Um, like actually gripping the pitch at the bottom of the bucket. So you'll have them doing gripping a pitch at the bottom of a, a rice bucket, so they have to reach down there, grab it, and then grab it like they're throwing it. And they have to grip. Yeah, and if they're a you know seventy forty fastball chained up guy. If they don't really have a good off speed pitch and they only throw those two, we'll do you know, three sets of fastball, one step to change it. We kind of try and be a little force. All right, so so they take the baseball in their hand and then shove it down the rice, or they the ball is at the bottom? Mm -hmm. um, either way, as long as the ball gets in the rice. Okay, but I was just, I'm trying to imagine, like, I'm trying to see how this how this would work, but. Trying to understand that way if I need to explain it to one of my kids. So. We, we try and grip uh, specific and then uh, kind of match up the privileges of the work we do in the rice bucket with what they would actually grip. All right. Go ahead. All right. I, I think, we like I said, we've got most of it covered in the show notes. Josh is a super smart guy, and I know that we're having issues with the audio. He's actually sitting in the press box. He's on about three different devices trying to make this all work. And so, Josh, I appreciate you sticking with me to working through all the issues and, uh, again, just sharing your knowledge because I think you got a, a lot of knowledge and skill that you can share with uh, some of us who aren't as focused on one specific sport. And, and uh, hey, I, I appreciate having you on, and I sincerely apologize for the audio issues. I don't really know what happened on my end, but... I, again, I sincerely apologize for that. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. It happens. It's part of technology. So, Carrie, any final um, shout outs that you would like to give there? As tomorrow, uh, uh, the this is recorded on the day before March first, so February twenty eighth. And is there any athletic training you would like to thank, Carrie? Um. I, I think we pretty much covered everything, but, you know, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to contact me. I love talking about baseball. You know, I'll probably talk more than you want to know. Um, so if you have any questions, please reach out and I'm more than happy to help you. But, um, yeah, I do. I, I like to work both on the end of a pitching coach and I like to work as the athletic trainer. And so I've got a, a kind of a unique viewpoint. Um, and I love to talk about it. So never, never hesitate to ask. All right, Kay, what's the best way for somebody to reach out and get hold of you? Um, honestly, um, email me. Um, it's carrie.williams at k12.wv.us. Um, send me an email, um, or you can try to send me a text. I don't always get phone calls for whatever reason. I don't have phone service at the school. But if you send me an email, you know, I'll, I'll send you my phone number and I'll text to you all day long if you'd like. All right. Well, there you go. So you can contact Josh man, bear frog on Twitter, Instagram, that kind of thing. So it's man because he's a man bear because it's <laughs> Baylor bears and frog. Cause he was at TCU, the horn frogs. So man, bear frog is Josh. Chris Butler is C Butler sports BT on Instagram. And then Carrie K A R I dot Williams at K 12 dot wv.us which is west virginia and then again if you want to get chris chris's book it's in the show notes if you want to get carrie's program it's in the show notes if you want to get uh some of the stuff that josh typed in or a picture or uh, the assessment the upper body assessment form um then that's again in the show notes and josh is going to put some of the exercises in there too so sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash arm care again sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash arm care Recently, I was on MedBridge, some doing some shoulder evaluation uh, CEU work. So again, if you want to do a little bit more of that work there on your own, be able to stop it. MedBridge is a really good resource. If you use the promo code the SMB, it'll save you some money. It'll help out the podcast. So if you're going to use MedBridge to get your CEUs, you might as well save money and help out the podcast. So using the code the SMB, 
uh, we'll get you a, a good deal there. So if you have questions, contact me, email me, and then I can put you in, t- in touch with Josh, Chris, or Carrie. And again, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash arm care for Jeremy, Chris Butler, Josh Ogden, Carrie Williams. That is a wrap. Thanks, guys.